Welcome to this Eagle's Eye video. And today we have the, the absolute pleasure of a special guest, Dr. Alex Giberman. Let me give a quick introduction. Dr. Giberman uh, graduated in 2014 with honors from the uh, Pennsylvania College of Optometry. And he then spent six years uh, working in a private practice. And, uh, but this year he made the leap to, um, to, to start his own practice, uh, 2020 Eye Care in Loveland, Ohio, together with uh, Dr. David Williams. And uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about that, uh, that later. Um, but perhaps first, um, could, you, could you tell us a little bit about how you, you use the, the eye surface profiler in your scleral lens practice? Sure, and uh, thank you again, Arnie, and good morning or good afternoon there in Holland. Um, yeah, we, uh, we have been using the eye surface profiler for the last couple of years. Um, and we're, we're really excited with the new updates and, and how that's played a, an awesome role, um, in improving the fitting experience, both for us and for the patient. Um, and it's really, I think, in my opinion, transformed itself to the point that we, if possible, are trying to use the eye surface profiler for, every single scleral fit that we perform in the practice, um, which, you know, is somewhat dependent on the patient and the information is only as good as the image. So, you know, getting a good image is of utmost importance. Um, and that's something I know we've all talked uh, a lot about as the, you know, how to go about getting the best possible image. Um, but, but really, yeah, if, if we can, um, we're at least trying to use it uh, with, with every single patient that we're fitting in a scleral. And, and what, what do you see as, as the main benefits of, of using this technology in the scleral fitting process? Well, I, I think it's number one, it's more information. Um, it's an excellent tool for gathering information and it's moving us closer to, to full empirical fitting. Um, so I guess the number one thing is it's really helping us to cut down on the number of follow-ups because when we can provide a lab with as much data and as much information as possible, um, it allows both us and the lab to uh, quickly and accurately design a lens that hopefully we can dispense on uh, the first try. And that's especially with all the software updates that we're seeing uh, from, from Eaglet and from the iSurface profiler, um, we're starting to notice uh, that even some of the more uh, and most challenging and complicated fits are getting done uh, on the first or second try. You work a lot with uh, scleral designs by Oculens. What can you tell us about them? Um, so really from the start, I've really enjoyed working with AccuLens. Um, <laughs> they, they pretty much are, the, are responsible for me uh, fitting sclerals. I didn't really have a good background in school. Um, I don't recall ever touching a scleral lens in school, which was not that long ago, but it just wasn't a big part of our program. So it was AccuLens that, that sent somebody out to our practice um, and they really just gave me a crash course uh, in training how to fit the lenses. And they were with me every step of the way. I mean, we really went from, from no fits to, uh, you know, hundreds of fits within a couple of years. And, and a lot of that's credit to them and the awesome, uh, you know, people that they have working there. And, you know, they never made me feel silly with asking questions. So they were, they were great on the front end and they've really been, uh, great all the way through. So as far as training, they were uh, amazing. They're an extremely customizable lens. You know, you're not stuck working with a single diameter or specific diameter. You can really adjust every single parameter that exists in their lens from the base curve to the diameter to, you know, the optic zones, the shape of the optic zones, quadrant specifics, you name it. So, um, you know, they're, they're constantly working to, uh, to up their game and um you know they're they're very again easy to get a hold of easy to work with so yeah i think uh okay. it's been been great working with them 
And I guess, of course, uh, you, you mentioned the, the customizability of their, their design. Of course, this is where the, the combination with the iSurface Profiler becomes such a powerful one. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, the, um, the information is only so good as, as the lab to a degree. I mean, you can, you can give a lab all the information in the world, but if, they're, if, if a lab is only able to produce a lens that has so many, um, you know, characteristics that are changeable, then, then they're kind of limited. Um, you know, AccuLens, their software and their, their cutting technology really allows them to be uh, adaptable. You know, they can take a look at a, at a design, they can take a look at this data, input it right into their focal point software and, uh, and pretty much design, you know, a, a lens in cyberspace and just take that data and plop it, plop it right in there and, and shape the, uh, the entire lens that way, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then you combine that with their, um, you combine that with their uh, multifocal profile, um, it's it's even better um and and actually recently with aculens they've done a lot with their uh their uh decentered design lenses decentered multifocals so that's um you know centration is is everything but when you can't achieve centration it's really nice to be able to measure uh how far to decenter the optics to so really a very deep and wide ability to customize and then in combination with the, the, the full 3D data from the iSurface profiler, you can basically achieve that every time. And I believe that you're, you're going to, uh, to illustrate this with, uh, with two case examples, but, um, but before we go there, um, well, you just started um, your new practice. Uh, how has it been so far for you? It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, definitely some uh, challenges. It's been an interesting year. Uh, you know, 2020 has been interesting. Uh, our practice is actually called 2020 Eye Care. So just in case people forget, uh, it pretty, should be pretty easy to remember. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously there's a lot of stresses and a lot of work that goes into building and starting uh, a new practice. Um, especially in today's day and age. But, um, it, you know, it, it's just something that uh, myself and my partner, uh, Dr. Williams, always wanted to do. We've been taught, we've been really good friends um, for the last six years. And really, since we met each other, it's something that we've been talking about and dreaming about. And uh, the, the stars aligned and we were able to able to do it. So, yeah, it's, we're, we're three and a half weeks in and we're rocking and rolling. Awesome. Really very impressive. And uh, that sounds very good. And of course, we, uh, we wish you and Dr. Williams all the best with your new practice. And, uh, and perhaps this is a good moment to, uh, to switch to uh, the two case examples. Sure. Uh, so I wanted to start with this one just because it was pretty straightforward, pretty, you know, um, definitely a, a great picture, great patient, you know, easy to pop his lids wide open, get a good image. Um, we're using, uh, you know, my strategy. I, I put a drop of Preparacane uh, in each eye, and then I'll put a drop of Blink Gel Tears in before I use the Gel Tears again to wet the fluorescein strip, uh, make sure that the eye is completely covered, and then we quickly get a couple uh, images. Um, so that's just my, my process in a nutshell. Um, so this is a, uh, this was a cone patient um, and I'll just show you the curvature map so you can get an idea of, of, uh, of what we're looking at. So I've got a nice red blob there on the cornea, you know, sim K's, steep K of about 52, which it's estimating. So, you know, um, we, we know what we're dealing with here. Um, you know, I, I'm mainly working out of the bisphere elevation map. Um, and so... You know, just as a general overview, even by by looking at the uh, the coloration and dragging your cursor, um, you know, on on the sclera, um, you, you kind of get an idea of uh, what type of lens and 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 what this is going to look like as far as quadrant specific or toric periphery or spherical. Um, his his eye was actually relatively uh, spherical, which you know uh, makes things a little bit 
uh, easier, I guess. But the, the other big thing that um, I'm looking for, at least as far as Aculens goes, and, and this probably goes for, for any lab, is the HVID. Um, so here it's listed at 12.59. Um, so, so pretty big corneas. Um, I, I would like to click on the HVID button just to make sure that this looks correct. Sometimes if the eye is maybe a little bit off center, um, that's, that's kind of step one, because at least as far as the, um, the, the trial lens that we're going to put on the eye, uh, as far as getting, uh, an over refraction, um, that's really just roughly based on the HVID. So as far as Aculens is concerned, if you have a cornea that's less than 12 millimeters, you're going with their 5.9 millimeter Maxim lens. Uh, and, and just to back up for a second, Maxim is the term for their lens that they use for uh, abnormal corneas. Easy fit is the lens that they use for normal corneas. We're gonna be mainly talking about the Aculens Maxim since most of the fits that I'm doing are, are for abnormal um, corneal pathology. So uh, the next step is going to the first lens fit. So their algorithms for all the labs are, are already in here. So you're simply choosing the supplier that you're going to use. In this case, we're using AccuLens and it's going to pre-populate um, a couple of things, you can choose which lens you want to use. So in this case, again, we're using Maxim because it's for an abnormal cornea. And we're going to switch this to 16.4 um, since we're using their um, larger uh, trial set lens uh, in this case. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier, all the diameters are, are customizable. So you're not stuck using 15.9 or 16.4. This is simply... Um, what's in the trial set. And so it's giving you, when I click calculate, um, it, it's going to estimate the lens, the sag, and the base curve of the closest trial set lens. And that's simply so that you can put, uh, when you go to get a, an over refraction of a lens, you're choosing a lens that's going to be comfortable and the closest best fit for the patient. And I think that's, that's important because Part of the fun of fitting sclerals is that first time you put a lens in their eye uh, and and having them, you know, first they look at the lens and they're like, oh, my God, this hard piece of plastic, it's ginormous. You're putting a dinner plate in my eye. Um, and then you put the lens in their eye and they're like, wait a minute, it, is it in? You know, and it, it's just kind of a, a fun thing to, to put that in there. They, they realize how comfortable it is. And then you, you do the over refraction and they're blown away by how clear they see. Um, so again, that, that's why I think it's, it's nice to have that, um, you know, initial satisfaction, even though it's still not your final lens. Um, and, and even though the lens may be designed pretty differently from that trial lens, because you're still sending this data to the AccuLens lab. Um, so let's do that. Let's click calculate here and see what it comes up with. All right, so this is telling us that using the 16.4 diameter lens that we should choose the lens from the trial set that has a base curve of 7.5. And then this apical clearance is then estimating the amount of central clearance that you should see when you use that trial lens. So yeah, that's pretty much the, the, the easy way to do this. And now in, in our office, my next step before I send anything to the lab, I'm now gonna take the patient to the room. We're gonna put this lens in, we're gonna do the over refraction. I like to make notes on just, you know, in, in general things that I'm noticing. What do the edges look like? Does the clearance match 400 microns? In my experience so far, it's been within about 50 to 75 microns. Um, in either direction, so that's been that's been great. Um, and so once once we have the over refraction and once we have that data, uh, we'll we'll come back to the computer here. And the next step is that AccuLens has uh, they've connected with Eaglet through what's called Direct Connect, and this makes it really really simple to uh, send this information to the lab. So you no longer have to save anything as a PDF or as any type of file and, and worry about sending it in a secure email. Now you simply click the button that connects to the AccuLens lab in this case. 
This opens in the web browser. All, all that you have to do is type in the, the information, your account number, the name of your account or your practice, phone number, your name, the fact that it's new, or if you're remaking something, you can choose that. Um, it will pre-populate the patient's name, which eye you're sending them. If you plan on sending the other eye, this is where you would select together as a pair so that the lab knows to look for the other one. Or if you're just sending one, you would select one eye only. It pre-populates the information, so you don't have to type in any of this. Um, all you're entering is the over-refraction. If you want to use a different material, um, you can select that here. Uh, if you want to make the lens blue, you can do that. If you want to add a multifocal or hydropeg, you're collecting that in add-ons. And I usually leave the modifications button blank. If I want to change anything or add anything, I would free type it here. So, you know, if I noticed when I put that trial lens on the eye that, you know, one quadrant was flat or one was steep or one was impinging, or maybe I would just kind of verify the location of the pinguecula, which, um, you know, Eaglet has also included a pinguecula button that you can now click and it will, it will circle, which we'll, we'll go back and, and show in a different example um, where that is. But, you know, I just, I like to, to include any and all information that I can. And that way the lab is armed not only with the image, but, but my, my physical information. And, and this um, combination, in, in my opinion, has really led to these one and done uh, fits. And then you could, um, once you're done with that, you, you click the submit button and you're done. You do not have to attach the image. It's sent um, along with this form and the lab is able to see and open that up uh, from, from their own computers. It is, it is easy as that. So uh, that is just kind of a, uh, a crash course through um, the Direct Connect system um, with Acculens. Some of these buttons at the bottom here are, are even nice just to show the patient while they're in here. And so they're not just looking at a, a colored map. You know, if you want to show them what your, you know, what their eye looks like and what you just took a picture of, that's kind of a cool button to show. Um, you know, get the scleral profile button, which, you know, gives a, a general estimation of if you're going to be using a, uh, you know, um, if it's a quadrant specific or if it's an irregular type of eye, uh, you know that so there's all sorts of good information here on the on the screen we can move on to our other patient take a look at the i smart merge this image so one of the nice things too again uh, about the uh, eye surface profiler is that if you've got uh, two images uh, maybe you like 80 percent of each one and you're missing a little bit of data in one quadrant you can combine two images and it's gonna um, as long as they're not completely different, it's going to allow you to, to merge those things. Um, you know, and, and especially when when you're, you know, some people, you know, just have a, a harder time getting their eyes open or maybe they're looking in the wrong place. So it's a, it's a useful tool. And just by the looks of it, this looks uh, a, a really complex, irregular uh, ocular shape, uh, not just the, the cornea, but also... Uh, the sclera, is that a pinguicula there on the nasal side? Yes, it is. And as, uh, as Arnie mentioned before, you know, this is not necessarily the most complex cornea, but the sclera, uh, the scleral shape is a little bit different. Um, certainly it's not, it, it, it's not round. It's not really a toric uh, periphery. It's, it's more of your kind of irregular quadrant specific, you know, the temporal side, uh, especially inferior temporal, um, you know, appears to be a lot uh, lower, a lot steeper. Um, so that, you know, if you're putting a, a trial lens on there, you'd expect the, those edges to be uh, decently flat. So that is one where um, when we know how flat or how much to change the, the edge profile there, um, it can really cut down on the number of remakes. Um, and this is one, again, where a quadrant specific design becomes uh, really nice. It really just helps with the centration of the lens, the fit, the comfort, and, and obviously the vision. So um, another way to look at this, of course, the, the tangent angle map, um, which really just shows the, the entire um, side over here 
is going to be pretty steep compared to the nasal side. And, and again, this is an interesting one too. You know, this is a um, kind of a mild uh, cone patient and really not much doing in his right eye compared to the, the left one, which we'll take a look at here in a moment. Um, but similarly, the, you know, compared to our last patient, this, this is someone with smaller cornea. So the HBID is uh, only 11.1. So with the AccuLens designs, again, we're going with their smaller lens, the 15.9 AccuLens Maxim in their trial set. Um, but, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how complicated uh, the sclera is or how complicated the sclera looks. At the end of the day, this is why we, we really love this data and we, we love the capability of sending these maps to the, uh, the, the companies, right? We, 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 let, we give the labs the challenge of simply matching a lens to the map and, and watching the magic happen. And actually, this gentleman came back um, yesterday and his lens fit absolutely perfectly. I mean, this was a, a one and done fit. His vision was 20-20 great comfort, great edge alignment. Um, so really, really cool to see uh, see this in play because that was actually our first dispense with the newest software update. So uh, I'm sure uh, Arnie and, and Eagle will be happy to hear we're batting a thousand on our one and done fit so far. <laughs> we're one for one. Absolutely, fantastic. So again, we're gonna go to our first lens fit. We're going to select AccuLens. We're going to select our 15.9, and we're going to let it calculate. I do want to, before I click that, I want to skip to the to the other eye here for a moment. And one of the things down here is you'll see a, there's a pinguecula button. So, you know, in, in this case, it's highlighting that on the nasal side, uh, this patient has a, a pinguecula here. So that's, that's good. It alerts you to look for it. Obviously you're going to see this in your slit lamp exam, but it also uh, alerts the lab as well. Um, and this is one of those things where, um, you know, again, whether you or, or the lab is going to be able to uh, measure the exact, uh, size, length, height, um, you know, radius from the, the central point of the vision. So they can, if, if you choose to do a notch um, or a micro vault or something around that, they know exactly um, how big and how wide and how large to make that. Um, so that's kind of a, a clever button that's been included down here. Move to our first lens fit, select our lab, the lens type, the diameter, Click calculate, and I think we'll see that that this lens is going to estimate quite a bit of, of uh, central clearance. Um, yeah, so it's estimating an apical clearance of 600 microns. And again, small eye, not super steep. Um, this is the flattest, uh, smallest lens in the set. And it has the lowest sag, so even using that one, there's still that much clearance. And when we put this lens on the patient's side, that was extremely accurate. Um, so again, that's just alerting the the lab to make those adjustments. Um, you know, both and, and you can do that in a number of different ways, uh, whether it be with uh, you know the peripheral curves, the base curve, the uh, mid peripheral curves. Um, so. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, this this lens came back looking uh, looking fantastic. So, same process. We would click the direct connect connect to AccuLens button. You know, I guess the overarching theme is is um, with how good these images and how good the information is. It takes a lot of the stress out of you know uh, out of fitting these more complicated um, scleral profiles. You know, in the past, again, it, you know, before you, you could put a number, a micron amount to the uh, to the quadrants, a lot of times there was just a lot of trial and error and guesswork going on with how much you wanted to, you know, change a specific quadrant or, or even before quadrant specifics, if it was just, uh, you know, 
the vertical and the horizontal uh, meridians themselves. Um, so, you know, this again, it's, you know, taking complicated fits that may have taken five or six tries down to one or two. So it's, it's really, really great. Um, same process, account number, name, contact information. It's a new order, new patient. All of this is pretty populated. In his case, we're, we're doing both eyes. We use the Maxim 15.9. Um, we write in our over refraction, we selected our material color, and then uh, we leave our notes and we submit it to the lab. Thank you very much, Dr. Gibberman, for, uh, for spending some time here today uh, explaining your, your, the way that you fit in the eye surface profiler in your scleral practice, and of course, then how you then apply it to um, uh, to, to order lenses with, with Aculens and then explain a little bit about the specific, specific uh, advantages that you see uh, with uh, their Maxim design. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really useful and, and, and uh, very good information for all of our uh, users and, and hopefully also will inspire some of the, uh, the doctors out there either uh, deliberating whether to go into scleral lenses or those who already have um, deciding, hey, if I really want to go towards more customized scleral lens fittings, um, that um, adding uh, profilometry data to the process could be uh, a, an excellent next step. Sure. Yeah, I, I think it's great. Um, I, I guess one other thing is that uh, as far as, you know, if, if you're a new doctor and you're, you're getting started with this type of stuff or a uh, new doctor, new, new to scleral fitting, mm -hmm. AccuLens is offering, you know, the they will either send someone out to your um, practice like they did with me, uh, or you actually have the ability to go out to Denver and uh, and spend a day or two with those guys um, out there. Um, my, my partner did that. Um, I know a number of people that have gone out to, to Denver to work with those guys, and, uh, and they're great at, at, at teaching. So, you know, definitely uh, take advantage of that. Very good. Thank you uh, uh, for, for sharing all that you have. And um, I think, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful time here. And um, well, let's, uh, let's round off this session and, um, and uh, see you at the next video, we hope. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.